Hello, everybody. I'm Edie Hill in today for Brooke Baldwin, who is at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Very busy day in news. But first, let's get straight to Brooke over at the Kennedy Space Center. So you got to see it finally, the launch. I finally got to see it. It was a pinch me moment for me. And, you know, I kind of looked over to my colleagues and said, guys, this is a moment going down in history. We're going to remember it being together. Uh, and right about now, the STS-135 or Space Shuttle Atlantis is climbing. It's about 200 miles up in orbit, uh, chasing the International Space Station before it docks there uh, early Sunday morning. If you were under a rock, I don't know, if you weren't watching television this morning, we're going to uh, replay that major moment, the moment of history, the launch. Uh, happened just about three miles over my shoulder from launch pad 39A. It was a go amazingly. Quite a suspenseful morning, though. We'll have that. Also, you're going to meet a woman. As I was in the midst of thousands of spectators this morning watching this historic moment unfold, she was wiping away tears talking to me about the, the patriotism and the poignance of this 135th and final shuttle launch. And also, you'll have to see, Edie, some uh, pint-sized astronauts looking ahead to what who knows what will be their next dream, how they will next get into space. Back to you. You were one of those pint-sized astronauts uh, a couple of years back, many but years back now, I guess. <laughs> so this yes. is exciting for you. 20 years ago. All right. Brooke? It was amazing. It was we'll amazing. We'll rejoin you in just a couple of minutes. Thank you. Houston now controlling the flight of Atlantis. The space shuttle spreads its wings one final time for the start of a sentimental oh, yeah. journey into history. I know you were probably doing the same thing at home that we were here in Atlanta. That was a shot of Control A in Atlanta. And, you know, it was just so quiet in the newsroom as you watched this happen. Just, just waiting and realizing the history of the moment that we were experiencing there. Atlantis on the last space shuttle mission ever. Today's 135th launch marks the end of an era. The NASA narrative I found fascinating. They described the liftoff as four and a half million pounds of humans and hardware bound for the International Space Station. The four astronauts on board are due to arrive at the floating observatory on Sunday and then begin delivering supplies. And they're expected to return back to Earth July 20th. Well, NASA got a break in the weather just when it was needed. So listen to the crowd reaction. It just gives you goosebumps, you know? Brooke Baldwin is at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, and I know that was what was happening on your arms, too. Your, your, the hairs just lift up as you're watching it. It just never ceases to be absolutely awe-inspiring. It is tremendously awe-inspiring. It's one thing to watch it, you know, on television. It's quite another to be standing here. And, you know, a different just members of our CNN crew have been walking past one another and saying, did you cry? Did you get a little teary-eyed? And we're all like, yes, we did. I mean, it was just incredible. There really aren't words to describe this morning. It was 11.26 a.m. And in case you missed this magical <laughs> moment, let's replay it for you. Take a look. Zero. And lift off, the final lift off of Atlantis on the shoulders of the space shuttle. America will continue the dream. Roger roll, Atlantis. Houston now controlling the flight of Atlantis. The space shuttle spreads its wings one final time for the start of a sentimental journey into history. 24 seconds now, as we watch this beautiful space shuttle lift off, remember uh, this whole program started back in April of 1982, so this 30-year era coming to a close, the next chapter. Uh, no one really knows the specifics yet, but one specific uh, one man knows. Um, here's a statistic for you. Once this whole shuttle program is said and done, 7,000 people will lose their jobs. And I spoke with one of those men. He, his name is Todd McLaughlin. He is a husband. He's a father of two little boys. He's a, a U.S. Navy veteran. And his last day is the final day of this uh, shuttle uh, mission here up in space. And, you know, he works in avionics. He works uh, with the solid rocket boosters, the SRBs, on the, on the space shuttles. And he talked about how he was hoping, you know, this day, this morning, would be when the shuttle would lift off. Because as much as he wanted to see the shuttle lift off with his actual family, this was really the final day that he could share this moment with his NASA family. Listen. Everybody's part of the A-team. Um, 
just having them move out of the area is is going to be hard. It's your family. It, it your is exactly family. exactly. In fact, we were just talking about if the launch actually you know the weather uh, doesn't work out for us and the launch extends into the weekend, we we're just saying well you know we'll get to be with our family to watch the launch at least and. This being the last launch, I love my family and everything, and, and I love um, having them with me. I, I love being with them to watch the launches. But um, that last launch, you really want to watch with your work family. Um, I'm really hoping it goes off Friday because being able to spend that last moment with the people that I work with is, is definitely something that I'm looking forward to. So Todd and his family, you know, their roots are deep here in the Cape Canaveral area. They don't want to leave. His fingers are crossed. He can find some sort of avionics job uh, similar to, to his history so they won't have to leave. He's very eager, eager to learn what the next step will be. And you know who else is eager to learn what the next step will be, Edie? Uh, a couple of precious little kids. I tell you what, I watched this uh, lift off this morning at the, the Kennedy Center visitor complex and all these different, I kept turning my head seeing all these little kids in their commander space suits. <laughs> I want you to meet just one of them, five and a half years old. Watch this. Let me introduce them. They are David, Jay, both of whom are four kindergartners, aspiring astronauts. And I have Cade here. Cade came all the way in from Colorado. Cade, high five for the commander suit, buddy. Oh, so why why do you like space so much, bud? Um, because like I never been there before and so Me neither, by the way. <laughs> um, so when I grow up I'm gonna be an astronaut and I'm going to the moon. You're gonna go to the moon? Maybe, maybe I can come with you. As a journalist, I could come with you on board. Yeah. What, what's so exciting about being here all the way from Colorado and seeing this launch? What are you so excited about? Um, I'm so excited about is that, um, like, I never seen the launch before. I only saw it on the computer, but now is my first, um, my, my last time to see it, and. It is, it is your last time. This is the last space shuttle. Are you a little sad about that? Yeah. So even, you know, a little kid from Colorado kind of gets it, Edie. He gets that this is an end of an era. And, you know, it, what do you do when you're a child and you dream of being an astronaut and you don't have a space shuttle to go up in? You know, that's kind of the next big question. Coming up next hour, I want to also share some sound from a woman who was just breathless wiping away tears this particular launch was so emotional for her and the three generations of family she brought here to florida back into you all right brooke thanks so much we'll see you next hour Atlantis has reached orbit for the final time. After a minor hiccup, the shuttle lifted off for the 135th and final space shuttle mission a few hours ago. And here is what the end of an era looks like. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. All three engines up and burning. 2, 1, 0. And liftoff, the final liftoff of Atlantis on the shoulders of the space shuttle. America will continue the dream. The four astronauts are due to arrive at the International Space Station Sunday to deliver supplies. They're expected back home July 20th. Millions watched the blast off on the Space Coast, on TV, even in New York's Times Square. Shuttle mission is symbolic right down to the mission patch. Now take a look at this patch. You can check out the artwork and you can see that there's a gold arch that surrounds the image of Atlantis. Of course, that's Omega, the last letter in the Greek alphabet, designed into the patch to recognize this conclusion of NASA's 30-year shuttle program. Well, Brooke Baldwin was lucky enough to be at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida for today's historic launch. And it's been a pretty emotional day, as you were mentioning, for a lot of the shuttle fans, right? It has been emotional. You know, I, they say there was something like a million people down here, according to the Space Coast Tourism Bureau, and I was with a couple thousand of them uh, early this morning, right around that magic moment, 11.26 a.m., when we saw um, here at Launchpad 39A, we saw uh, Space Shuttle Atlantis take off. 
you know, and one woman I want to, to share with you, her name is Linda Johnston, and it was so important for her to be here from Palestine, Texas. She traveled all the way, they drove, they were prepared to stay a couple of days as it was sort of up in the air as to whether or not Atlantis would take off. She was here uh, alongside her, her, her grandchildren, her own children, three generations. And she says, seeing this pointed picture, it's all about patriotism. Listen. Well, this is something I've always wanted to do. I have always been interested in space programs, and I think it's kind of a real shame that it's not going to be around anymore. But I understand why. Uh, it's just amazing to me the number of people that were here today, uh, all from all over the world. They were, I heard every dialect in the world. <laughs> Two things I want to point out where I was earlier this morning, the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. You can go in two years to actually see, not quite touch, but see the Atlantis. It will be put on display uh, thanks to NASA and a hundred million dollar complex in which the actual space shuttle will be housed. Remember, they're retiring four of them, uh, New York, D.C., L.A., and right here uh, at the Kennedy Space Center. Another interesting fact, because I'm kind of into facts here, I think space is fascinating. You know that the uh, launch was today, July 8th. It's a 12-day mission carrying the MPLM up to the uh, International Space Station. They will be back down July 20th, E.D. Hill, and that date is significant, and perhaps part of this pressure to get this thing up, July 20th, 1969, 42 years ago, that was the lunar landing um, that so many people remember, and so they wanted these this crew of four to come down and be down the same day that Buzz Aldrin uh, and the rest of those guys were able to touch down on the moon 42 years ago. Such significance here, historic day here really in Florida. <laughs> Brooke Baldwin, thank you very much. We'll check back with you a little bit later in the hour, though.